my name's Matt Angel. Um, I'm from Shropshire Fire and Rescue, and um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my experience in in the fire and rescue service. Um, I joined when I was actually 25 years old, so I was a little bit older uh, than a lot of you guys in, uh, and girls in the school. Um, the reason for this is um, I'd done a few other jobs beforehand. Um, I had been told, and it's kind of the the um, the kind of things that I'm going to tell you uh, advice really is to probably get a little bit of um, work experience under your belt, a little bit of life experience before you apply. Um, the reason for that is that we have a very high demand um, for any whole time um, firefighting roles that come up. Um, just to give you an example, uh, I think the last time we recruited, um, we had a bit of a, a spell about 10 years where we didn't recruit um, due to government cuts. So we were just using what we call natural wastage. So um, we were waiting for people to retire so that we could bring numbers down. So we had, like I say, we had a hiatus for about uh, 10 years where we didn't recruit anybody. We just started that up again over the last few years. We had about 12 positions available. Um, I think in the initial stages, we had over 2000 people applying. So it's a very, very competitive um, job to get into. Um, that being said, you know, if you're dedicated and this is the, the job that you want to do, um, it's available to, to apply all over the country. Uh, Shropshire, um, we actually had to put a postcode uh, restriction on the people applying um, due to the fact that we did initially have, like I said, a huge amount of people applying uh, and people would apply from all over the country. Uh, the downside to that is that once um, you've got the, the qualified and they've done all the training, there's nothing stopping them from, from putting a transfer in to go back to their own brigade. So you will find when you're applying for certain uh, fire services around the country, there may be a postcode restriction on that. Um, that being said, uh, the fire service isn't just about firefighters. Uh, and this is what I'm going to hear to tell you a little bit about different kinds of opportunities that are available within the fire service as a whole. Um, like I said, I started at 25. Um, so I was a bit late to the party, although saying that, um, I did have quite a bit of life and work experience behind me, uh, which I think actually helped me um, to, to actually get in that time. Now, I started uh, on the watch. Um, I started at Telford Central. Um, I'm going to play a video in a minute just to give you a bit of an overview of um, Shropshire Fire and Rescue as a whole. Um, but we've got three whole time stations. I started off at Telford. Um, I did roughly about eight years on a watch operationally. Um, I went from uh, Telford, uh, I went to Wellington for a spell, uh, I went to Tweedale uh, when that was open as a whole time station for a little bit. And then I moved, I finally got uh, a little bit of promotion uh, and I went to Shrewsbury and I've worked on a watch in Shrewsbury for a time um, before uh, being permanently promoted into a role within the fire safety department. So I actually left operations behind for, for a little bit. I went into the fire safety department for about three years, two and a half, three years. Um, and I managed to get qualifications in doing uh, fire safety audits. Um, after my spell in there, I then got promoted again. Uh, so I did the promotion trail and, and I got a, uh, a job as a training instructor at Telford Central. Um, probably one of the best roles I've ever done, one of the most challenging roles I've ever done, certainly. Um, and probably one of the most exhausting roles I've ever done. Um, that being said, uh, it was a great time. We had great camaraderie in there. We had a brilliant team in there. Um, you get to do pretty much everything and you're, you are instructing everything. So you're teaching everybody from, um, you know, your new recruits starting for the people that have been in for 20 plus years. Um, and then also getting the, the opportunities to teach brand new skills to those firefighters that are already in so for example um we went through a phase a few years ago where we introduced um rope rescue uh, we we'd had a kind of form of rope rescue but we had to overhaul the whole um procedures uh, kit etc policy so we had to introduce a whole new set of skills so that was that was quite a challenge but it's been great so like i said in the training department one day i would be uh, abseiling down some uh, side of a, a mountain um, so the following day I could be in my water rescue gear teaching people uh, how to perform water rescues uh, in the rapids in the seven 
Um, day after that, I could be um, wearing breathing apparatus in, in hot fire conditions. Um, so it, it's a very varied role. We have lots of, of different uh, skills, obviously, that we acquire over the years. Uh, and we have to keep those competencies up. So there's constant training that we're doing, uh, whether that's on a watch or whether that's coming to the training department. Um, and then following that, I, I moved uh, after doing six years in the training department um, and nearly burning myself out. I then moved to uh, what we call now the group support team. Um, now, well, there are two sides of the, say two sides. We have um, our operational side, we have whole time, what we call whole time firefighters. They are people who are employed uh, in a full time contract. And then we have uh, a large chunk of our personnel, um, which are spread out throughout the county, um, which we call our on call personnel. Now, these are people um, who live and work in, in uh, the areas uh, around Telford, and they provide fire cover for us on our on call stations. And what that basically entails is they will respond from their home. They'll respond from their workplaces, um, go down to the fire station, onto the fire engine, and then proceed uh, on the fire appliance to whichever um, emergency that they've got. Um, so we count a lot on our on-call personnel. Um, I'll give you, I'll show you a, um, an example in a minute of what I do within my role. And I basically am a, we are a support team for our on-call personnel. Um, I'm just going to do a little, I'm going to try the uh, screen sharing business, if you just bear with me a second, and I'm going to show you, um, first off, I will show you a video. At Shropshire Fire and Rescue Service, we strive to make the county a safe place to work, visit and call home for around 500,000 people. The county is rich in history, with a quarter of the landscape designated as an area of outstanding natural beauty. A thriving economy means that the service is responsible for protecting hundreds of miles of infrastructure, as well as businesses, schools, national heritage sites and beautiful natural surroundings. We operate from 23 strategically located stations, all coordinated from a central control room that handles our emergency calls at Shrewsbury. Three stations are whole time, including headquarters in Shrewsbury, Telford and Wellington and a further 20 are on-call stations and are found in our most rural communities. Annually, we attend some 4,000 emergencies and employ around 500 people in operational and support roles. On the response side, our fleet comprises around 25 fire engines and additional specialised vehicles, such as an area ladder platform, water rescue equipment, animal rescue specialists and command support units. This means we can respond swiftly to emergencies in either rural or urban areas of Shropshire. Businesses are guided by our protection team, while schools and wider communities are supported by prevention officers who offer advice and guidance to help prevent fires happening in the first place. The service prides itself as being deliberately developmental and invests heavily in staff throughout the organisation offering career progression and opportunities to advance within the service. To learn more about our service, visit shropshirefire.gov.uk. Okay, hopefully uh, you all managed to see that okay. Um, so yeah, that gives you a bit of a, bit of a taste of really of what, um, what to expect uh, from joining Shropshire Fire and Rescue Service. We've got a number of different, or a number of different skills. Um, like I said, we've got the operational side. There's no real technical difference between the training of our, of our on-call on staff, like I said before, and our whole time staff. Um, however, there is discrepancies with some skills that we do not train our on-call staff on purely because they don't have the time to maintain those competencies. Um, 
So what I'm going to show you very briefly uh, is a little bit about what I do. So it kind of encompasses really everything that we do at the Shropshire Fire and Rescue. Uh, so I'm just going to share my screen again, if I can. Um, and I'm going to do a little PowerPoint for you. Um, I'm part of the group support team. Uh, like I said, we support our uh, on-call personnel primarily, but we're also there to, to support our, uh, our whole time staff as well. Um, so these are where the stations, all of our stations are situated within Shropshire. And you can see the red ones there, Shrewsbury, Wellington, Telford. Um, they are our whole time stations. So they are, um, they are crewed 24 hours a day, um, 365 days a year. Um, slight difference between um, Shrewsbury and Wellington is they also have on-call capability. So we've got on-call staff there um, to support our, our whole time staff. Um, so you can see we've got them spread out throughout the county. OK, it's a big county um, and we do maintain fire cover around about 98 percent of the time, which is which is good, which means all of our fire uh, appliances are available all the time, well, 98 percent of the time um, with a full crew, uh, which is quite good really compared to the rest of the country. We're very good compared to the rest of the country. Um, so we split up into three regions. Don't ask me why it's three. Um, we have a north, a south and a west of the county. Um, so I've got a team of people you can see here. That's me there without the beard looking a lot younger. Um, so I've got a team which I'm responsible for the north. So these are all of my um, stations in the north. So I support all those and I've got two firefighters which help support. Uh, then we have the west of the county and we have the south of the county. OK, so like I say, we support our on-call personnel. We provide fire cover. So like I said before, uh, especially now we've hit something, uh, hit COVID and we've had a number of staff going off um, having to isolate. We have to make sure that our appliances are available. Um, pretty much I'm trying to maintain 100 percent of the time. So if we have any deficiencies within any staffing at, at any of our stations, then our teams, we will send our teams out uh, to go and fill those um, deficiencies. Uh, recruitment, um, this is why I'm here today. Um, we are always looking for on-call personnel. Like I said, our, our whole time personnel um, is very competitive to get into uh, due to the fact that we, it doesn't come up very often. Um, slightly different in other areas, West Midlands, for example, uh, London Fire Brigade, the, you know, the big metropolitan brigades, they will be recruiting a lot more in Shropshire because we've only got three whole time stations and due to the nature of um, how long we work for, which is around about 30 odd years, 30 years uh, before people retire, it doesn't cut, the opportunity doesn't come up very often. Okay, so that's why it's so competitive. That, however, that being said, you can get that job satisfaction um, from being on call. So um, I'm involved in the publicity for recruitment because we're always recruiting for on call personnel. I'll visit local employers, chat with local employers, give them, tell them what the benefits are of people coming to work for us. Um, I'll meet potential recruits. And then this part of the bottom, facilitate job related tests. So these are the physical tests and the written aptitude tests you need to take uh, to get into the, the fire service. Um, if you want to go and have a look at those tests, by all means, go onto our website. Um, there are uh, some videos on there which show you exactly what the kind of job related tests are there's nothing that can really prepare you for it if i'm quite honest with you um because it they are unique to the fire service so um however that being said you can actually make sure that you do enough training uh, you've got enough stamina and strength to actually uh take part in those tests and i'm sure you know if you get to a decent level standard of, of fitness you won't find them a problem um we also also get involved in station training so we'll train, like I said, our, uh, assist training in the north of the county. We can help book uh, additional resources um, and help complete risk assessments, that sort of thing. We also run the major exercises throughout the, our service. So we go from everything from uh, small uh, service exercise with one appliance to big protracted incident um, exercises, uh, which we will do with other agencies. So, for example, in the summer, not this summer, not a lot going on. This summer, the summer before, we were doing a lot of work with the heart team, which is the hazardous area response team, uh, the paramedics, the police, search and rescue, 
we had some very big exercises going on um a couple down by the power station before that got demolished um and it's just making sure that we all working cohesively together um and making sure that we all are, are, are striving for the uh, for a, a joint aim basically to get that that resolved um we also get involved in development, so I will get involved. Um, I, I do a lot of development with um, on-call watch managers and crew managers, so supervisory management. I take them through their development programs uh, and I'm their assessor, which basically signs everything off at the end. Um, I will also assist those watch managers in taking through their development firefighters. Um, we will make sure that we sit in on training uh, and assist with training um, courses at the training centre. Um, and then we've got a whole host of different additional um, things that we do. So we'll do what we call a risk management system. We go to any potential risks within station areas and we'll do those risk assessments. So that will be things like how many appliances we need there if there will be a fire there, um, how many additional resources we need, if there are any open water sources, all those sorts of things. We'll gather all that information in one place. So if we actually go to any of these um, God forbid we go to any of these uh, industrial places, uh, premises that have a fire, then at least we are well and truly prepared for it all. 